All right. Now, when it comes to modifying and customizing your content center, you got a couple choices. The first one is to copy existing libraries. This is the easiest way to do this, right? Is to copy existing libraries, and I'll show you some options uh, even within that. But basically, you're trying to reuse existing data. The bolts that I'm gonna be using aren't any different than the bolts that are in there. Um, however, I do want to you know, just add my own part numbers. So that's just information. It's not modeling, uh, anything like that. It's just information. So I wanna reuse that data uh, and customize the family table, right? To, to reflect my custom part numbers, or maybe it's just a property like materials, right? I need a stainless steel version of some of these nuts and bolts, which you know, of course is gonna have a different part number, okay? Um, so we're gonna populate that read write library with a copy of these existing libraries. Okay. The other way um, you can go with this, right? I mentioned there's two major ways, right? Instead of copying existing libraries, you can publish your own, okay? Now, um, I only recommend this for stuff that's, that there's just nothing to reuse there. So uh, the PVC valve that you see there, the uh, ball valve, I don't think that exists in the content center. So we're gonna publish our own version of that. You, you have to model it from scratch, okay? You have to make sure you include parameters that um, reflect uh, exactly what you need. And th these are unique components. They, they're not something that exists in Content Center, but you want a family of these. Um, they are probably something you still can buy, you know, off the shelf anywhere in the world. Um, but uh, they will start off as iParts. Okay, so we'll go through an example of both of those. Okay. Um, and uh, let's start with, um, uh, with the first one, right? Let's go to uh, Inventor here, okay? And without any files open, uh, we can go to Inventor here and start uh, working with um, uh, with our uh, editor, right? So if we go to Tools, you'll see ha you have a Content Center uh, panel here, right? With an Editor button, we'll go there and start to you know expose some of the tables. So if I click here. Right, everything here that's visible is grayed out. And if you guys remember, I'm in my content center uh, editing project, so I should be able to see my custom libraries. Uh, we're set to what's called a merged view. I'm seeing all the libraries, um, including my, uh, uh, my custom one, but there is nothing in the custom one. So I don't see a ton of stuff. I see ANSI, DIN, routed system, sheet metal. Those are the libraries I wanna borrow from. Okay, so we'll, we'll work with something simple uh, for right now, and um, we'll start with like a, a hex nut, okay? I want my own version of this, so I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna copy this, right? And you have two options, okay? Um, read up in the help on the options, but I highly recommend you don't do copy to, okay? Um, I'll show you what it does, okay? Keep an eye on hex nut inch, Okay, and let's see, uh, I might have not added that. Let's go ahead and check that out. I might have made a mistake there. Yep, these are read-write. Uh, only thought there is I might need to Let's try it this way and see. Huh. We'll do one more thing here. Change projects. Maybe change projects back. Okay. I'm seeing both my read write libraries. I should be able to use them. Uh, let's see.
right, so let's try one more thing, which is restart and better. Um, but we should see that library. And if not, I might end up switching to desktop content. Not sure why I won't see my uh, other library, but let's go and restart Inventor. Yeah, so somebody's suggesting, you know, vault permissions, you know, do you need to be a CC editor or content center editor? Uh, and I would probably look at that myself as well, but I am logged in as admin. So I should be able to do that. Um, I was able to create them, it should let me edit those. But let's take a quick peek again. Peek again. And on this same note, right, if you run into some issues similar to Javier and you're one of our customers, uh, go ahead and reach out to our Lifeline team, right? We have a team of people dedicated to answering questions um, and solving problems like this every day. So if you do run into something like that, uh, definitely let us know and uh, can you know help you through that process. All right, so let's go to filter to ANSI again. There it is. So um, it now shows up, <laughs> right? And so remember, we're, we're kind of experimenting with this right now. Um, I just had to log out, log back in for whatever reason. But um, I'll show you what this does, okay? Copy to uh, test. We're, we're gonna keep doing this on the test over and over again. So if I choose copy to test, right? It's taking that library, copying it to my test library. And what's interesting here is that um, my, the hex nut inch that comes with the software is no longer visible. It's replacing it sort of magically, right? In front of your face there uh, with your own custom library. It's opaque as opposed to these being sort of transparent or translucent. Um, you could tell it's, uh, it's your own custom library by that, okay? and it shows a link. This is what I hate about this option, is if you move on to another version of Vault, you have to have the original library plus your library in order to do anything with this or to use it at all. So I don't like it, right? Uh, watch what happens when I go to hex nut metric and I use one of the other options. So one of the other options is to save copy as, okay? You have this option when you go to save copy as to make it an independent library or a link library. So this will create a link like this. Um, it'll allow you to make some further changes, but you are limited to the type of changes you can make with that first option. Uh, you cannot you know, do things to the family template, for instance. Uh, you can only do stuff with a table. What I suggest is you know, anything that has a link is kind of uh, restrictive. It ties you down to the original library you copied it from, from ANSI, from ISO, whatever you copied it from. Um, so this kind of does the same thing. A little, there's a few more options here. I highly recommend creating a separate independent library. That's a true copy of all the information into your own. Okay? And we're gonna copy it to continue test, right? Because it's not ready for production. So, uh, there it is, and I would copy every little thing that I could possibly use for production into this library uh, so that we can customize it and eventually you know, roll it out to production. So it's first one, independent. I'm going to go ahead and call this my Kativ uh, library. This is going to be the family name. Uh, there is a family uh, description that goes here. This could be more verbose if you need to. Uh, I'm also going to put this uh, here. Um, okay, and um, I'm going to put a little bit more information, right. and I'll take out the out part. Okay, when it comes to the folder name, right, uh, it's going to create a uh, family folder name uh, by what you see here. That usually tries to link this uh, link this together, um, but you can create. You know, if you're going to do this for multiple nuts you can create something that's a little bit more generic, like a folder for nuts. And it would put anything you, you put in here as a family folder name of nuts later on when you publish it into the same folder, okay? Or separate it out by having a unique folder name. Okay. So um, something interesting I uh, found out with uh, somebody is, you know, clicking review, okay? Uh, clicking review here helps you start customizes, uh, helps you start to customize this just a little bit. Okay. It exposes some of the expressions in here. 
Uh, and you can see here, when I, you know, this is the result, but when I click here, it shows the expression it's gonna use for the file name, okay? And it still has the word copy up in here. So, you know, if you want to start to customize this early, if you have very few simple things you wanna customize, you can do it here, right? So I want the file name to say Kativ and TB and, you know, use some of these expressions here. These are parameters it's referring to, okay? And this is sort of a, a preview of what I'm gonna get here. Okay. So with the part number, same thing, if you know, there's uh, probably an expression here uh, that it draws it from, but this is a preview. Uh, you could do some limited uh, customization here early on. Okay. So I'm gonna click okay. okay. And, um, I'm gonna continue here. Somebody's uh, talking about a frozen screen. So uh, Nigel, if you can let me know if it's just that one person. I think it's just that one person. I can okay. see uh, I can see your screen motion. Okay. So, you know, it hasn't made the copy yet. I've just made one little customization with the file or the, the file name. Uh, I'll click okay. And um, you'll see in just a moment, you know, I copied a hex nut metric. And one of the big differences is instead of replacing the original, right, it creates, a new family, okay? And it's really obvious, you know, which is the custom one. This is not as obvious, uh, it's opaque, so that makes it, you know, a little bit easier to find and see, uh, but there it is, right? With either one of these, what you're gonna customize in the, uh, in the table, right? You start to customize now by right-clicking and, you know, going to the, uh, uh, the family table, right? So let's take a quick peek at it. Okay, and I can customize this one, but I cannot customize the gray ones. They are read only. We want to still conform to whatever you know, Autodesk standard libraries are there. So let's just say as far as nuts go, right? One of the things I want to filter out, I don't want to use anything that's, uh, you know, lower than a certain size. Okay, so nominal diameter. I don't use 1.6 millimeter nuts, right? So, um, you can go here and basically start to filter these out by right clicking. Uh, you got two options. You can delete the row like forever, or you can suppress it. Suppressing it basically means we can bring it back later if we decide, yeah, I guess we're gonna use three millimeter nuts, okay? So already that's gonna uh, filter out things, make them invisible uh, to the users, our intended audience, right? Uh, you could also add rows, okay? So you could certainly just add a, a row in between here and put in your own values. There, if you notice here, there are tons of values. If you're not sure what these all control, some of these are pretty straightforward, it makes sense to put one out there, right? Publish one or use one, and then look at the parameters inside that file, and that'll give you a good idea as to what these mean, okay? So, okay, uh, let's continue here. Uh, the fact that these are lightning bolts here means, hey, we haven't really saved this. If you apply this, Right? It lets you know, hey, it successfully published that, and these are right now, at the moment, not visible to whoever's using this, this library, okay? So another good way to do this is to open this up in Excel. So I'm gonna click here, and you might already have Excel files uh, that contain part numbers for the four millimeters versus the five versus the six and so on. Um, so, uh, this option, and I'm hoping, you know, Excel will come up here in a second, and, and it is, um, brings the table, the same table up in Excel. Sometimes, you know, some of us can do magic with Excel, right? I can get pretty uh, fancy with some of the formulas, but I can open up Excel, filter out things from an ERP system, and get all the part numbers I need in a certain order, and copy and paste those. So, I don't have, you know, a, an Excel spreadsheet for that but I am gonna you know, make a unique part number. This is really generic. I'm gonna make these B10-1002, um, these type of part numbers, and um, you know, I can copy and paste or put in you know, those values from a spreadsheet. For time's sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and auto-populate these to make these unique, okay? So I gotcha here. Make sure that whatever's being used for the file name is unique. Uh, it's got to be unique. You can't have duplicates. In fact, it'll bark at you, uh, and it should create a you know, unique uh, uh, file name here in just a second. 
and Hav, you're, we're going to run pretty long on time here, I think. So. Okay. Uh, so let me close this. We'll click OK. We'll take a second to actually close it and save it. All right. So that got published. That's ready to go. That is something that people can use. And when you're ready, right, if you've tested this out, put it in. Um, and by the way, this is going to work with the bolted connection tool, right? If you've tested it out, you can copy this to Katie Production and delete it out of test. Okay. So that those users, you know, that are using with that, you know, specific uh, project are going to see it. So keep that in mind. Um, if that's what you would do with that. And um, uh, I will do one last thing, which is publish a, um, a content center that's custom, right? That doesn't exist. I'm not creating, I'm gonna create a copy, but I am gonna go ahead and open this up um, inside of Inventor. Um, in fact, I think I have a shortcut to it. There we go. So uh, here's a fitting. Okay, and uh, keep in mind too, it's meant to be used with tube and pipe. Okay, so with special components that have that work with design accelerators, um, you know, you can see here I have a table that lets me have a three quarter inch, one inch, one and a quarter inch. These just need to be I part. Okay, take a look at the table. There's lots of information there. Uh, some of these are identified as keys. So I typically choose nominal diameter and then open closed. And that's it for you know choosing one of these valves. Okay. And if I go to the manage tab, when I go to uh, decide, hey, I, I want this to work with tube and pipe. If I miss this, it will not work. I want to go to this authoring tab and click on tube and pipe, and it'll prompt me for specific information to categorize this as a valve and have it work with tube and pipe. Okay. So in this case, it's already been done, but you can see I could publish this as a valve, as a T, and uh, put in connections and how it's going to engage with tube and pipe. And likewise, there's similar information for how uh, you might publish this to work with um, uh, bolted connections if this was a bolt. So this one's ready to go, okay? Um, and, and basically, we'll go ahead and publish this here. You can see here, uh, I have to do that first, and I'll go ahead and publish the part. Okay, again, I'm gonna put it in Katib test because I wanna test it out first. I'll click next. Uh, I'll click next here. It's gonna go automatically to the valve category because of that publishing process. Uh, there's already information here to capture the nominal size and required parameters. Okay, keys. So you can use this in or out of uh, tube and pipe and I'll have to choose a nominal diameter and open close state. So, uh, ball, valve, right? I'm putting in information to help me identify that family. I'm gonna take away the word done. It came from file name. And if you wanna be able to filter this out by standard, you're gonna to wanna to maybe put in a standard. You could put in your own Kativ standard. That'll help you filter it out um, so that it works, uh, so that you could just, you know, uh, whittle things down to just that. published right so in order to use it right here's another design accelerator uh, that you'll see here I think in this file you know we don't have any of um, the pipe here so I'm just going to quickly uh, publish this or get to a place where it'll populate the route and this is where you know if somebody published an elbow or pipe it just knows to automatically fill this with uh, a certain pipe size and, you know, connect the, the dots here. Yeah. And we're at okay. the time of, so if you want to okay. wrap. Sure, I'll, I'll wrap it up. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and place um, a component here from um, the content center. And uh, actually we'll do this here, place fitting from the content center. So um, 
I'm going to look for my published parts, which is uh, you know going to be somewhere here in my team pipe. And we'll take a look at valves. And there it is, right? So when I double click on this, and I don't remember what the size is, but I think it's uh, one and a quarter, I get to choose open, close, and it knows to break the pipe right into two pieces and place itself correctly on there. Okay, that's as a, a result of publishing it to the content center file. And you know these have now the capability of auto routing themselves or or working you know with tooth and pipe. So it's important that you do that. Coming back to this, right? We took a look and you know just went through an overview to see you know what the content center is, how it works. Uh, we pointed you guys to, to some resources, so make sure you utilize those. I think this will help in a, uh, a really profound way to get you guys to, to be able to standardize your components. Okay, uh, you know, we talked about what it takes to, to do this. It takes an iPart, typically that's how it works and how it generates these components. Okay, we also took a second to talk about what you need to do to effectively manage these parts. Okay, creating a test library, creating a production library, copying these files over. Last but not least, we took a look at two ways to modify this. You know, one, just taking existing components, reusing them, modifying the table. And the second one is adding or uploading completely custom components from scratch, right? They need to be iParts. If they're gonna work with nuts and bolts or, or the frame generator or any of these design accelerators, you have to publish them as such, right? So that they have the right requirements built in. So um, with that said, just a couple announcements here, guys. Uh, the next session is gonna be on inventor tolerance stack up. And so uh, these are really important. We need to, to somehow analyze those in a lot of cases because that stack up can make a huge difference. There are tools built in uh, to uh, the inventor tolerance stack up analysis that will add them to inventor. Comes with product design and manufacturing collections. Uh, if you're interested in that, you know, join this next session. Uh, we'll be talking about that. I think Alex is going to do that. Okay. Um, one more thing as well. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what's new, there is a, an, an online demo that you can take a look at. It's interactive. Um, Nigel can post that to the uh, chat if you guys wanted to take a look at that. Um, but I believe I, I put a link in there. And so you'll see it in the chat here in just a second. Okay. And as usual, right, if you need help, uh, from us, reach out to us. We're here to help. We enjoy this stuff. Uh, we're all, uh, you know, avid, you know, CAD guys and data management guys. We uh, live, breathe, eat this stuff, and we'd love to help. And so I'll go ahead and open it up to some Q&A. I think there were some uh, questions in there. Yep, there were a few. Hopefully we can get all of these answered here pretty quickly. Okay. Um, so recommended use of Content Center and Vault. Why? What are the pros? What are the cons of Vaulted Content Center? Uh, okay, so uh, one of the things I mentioned, it is much easier to manage who has access to that, okay? So somebody even said, you know, well, I couldn't access it for a second. Oh, do you have the right permissions, right? Because you have to either be an admin in Vault or have a role added to your, your permissions that allows you to edit the content center. So now the intern cannot come in and just make changes to the content center, right? We can control who does it. Um, uh, and I, one of the things I like is the fact that if your vault is being backed up, your content center, your custom content center libraries are being backed up. Yep, just okay. make sure that when you migrate the vault, you migrate the content center. Just yep, and whoever's doing that probably knows, but yeah, uh, you know, if we're doing it, we're pretty good about doing that. As yep. well. I had a customer who didn't do it for a number of years. Yep. Um, it's really hard to recover that. You need like the original one. Yes. Uh, so just FYI, if you uh, if you forget to do it for like two years and you don't have access to the original one, you're kind of um, out of luck there. So just FYI, make sure you're migrating those two. Excellent. Okay. okay. Um, can I change the graphics of a copied content center component in the custom content center? So I guess like the yeah. icon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, I don't know the answer to that right off the bat. I know for sure that you know, when you're publishing your own custom content, you have an option at the very end 
that says, hey, what do you want to use as an image in the content center? And you can draw one out uh, or not. Um, I'm almost certain there's a way to do that. I just, I don't know the answer to that right away. Uh, we could yeah, probably, probably reference. Yeah, I'm sure it's referencing some image file somewhere or mm -hmm. it's capturing one when you do it. So uh, there might be some way to do it. I don't think out of the box, there is like an easy option though. I'm sure like yeah. if you get savvy enough and start going to some of the reference yeah. files and stuff, start editing those things, you can totally do it. Yep. All right. um, so Jesse's asking, this topic seemed to have a lot of potential for more in-depth discussion. Any chance to get this in a four hour format? Um, so Jesse, I posted a link in the chat earlier with essentially a four hour version of content center stuff. Yeah. Um, Cause we've done a productivity training on it. Uh, if you can't find that, I know you talk to Brian on a pretty regular basis. Uh, you can have Brian give that to you as well. And even the, there's one of the YouTube videos where we recognize that we did a part one and a part two. <laughs> so one yeah. of the YouTube videos from like 2016, which is, it hasn't changed that much uh, to where it should make a difference. Um, is yeah. a part one and a part two because it lent itself to to ABA videos, but the four hour one is the one from our production yep. or uh, productivity training that I think you'll want to reference. Yeah, and there there were a couple of questions about adding more like libraries to Content Center. I don't think it's on the roadmap for Autodesk in terms of like adding more standard stuff. Um, yeah, so trying... it's asking like a, a certain type of nut, uh, like an elastic locking nut or something. Um, so what I would do with that okay it's not easy is if you could take something that's similar right and uh, copy that library yep. there is a way to uh, take out the family template make your modeling changes and put it back okay um, there is a way to do that and modify the actual geometry so when I copied that nut if I wanted holes on one side of that nut I could have you know, in addition to giving it new custom part numbers, I could have um, taken out the family template, which is that one part file that everything's based off of in that family, drilled the hole, added parameters to make it smart, right? And then uploaded or updated the family template. All right, uh, what's the best way to share an assembly that uses part files from Content Center with third parties? Uh, pack and go the assembly. Pack and go, yep. And, and there is a- There's a setting, click it. Absolutely. Include content center, I think is what it is. And just check it. That or library, but there's definitely an option. Take a look, read through those options as you pack and go. Yep. Um, and then I guess this is a question for the design accelerator. Do the part files have to be open to cut the hole? Um, no, I, I mean, well, here's the thing. Um, so my first answer was no, but if you're seeing it on screen, technically it's open in the background because it's part of the assembly. The assembly can't live without that part. It's open in the background, but you don't have to actually, you know, have it open on another screen all by itself. Yep. Right. So. So you need access to the file. Yep. But it doesn't have to be open in its own window, I guess. And, and, and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and those, those features initially, I think only exist at the assembly level. Yep. Um, they can propagate down to, uh, no, they propagate down to the part. Uh, but they are connected to the assembly. So if those whole, if those bolted connections move around, the hole moves around, uh, there is a sort of an adaptive relationship there that you can turn on and off. Yep. Uh, and then another question, what in, what better version did bolted connections start adding holes? I think the bolted connection improvement was like 18. Um, I don't think so. I think it was long, even before that. I think it's, it, there's been, I think it's been doing that for a while, but, um, I couldn't tell you for sure. If you think it's 18 and it's, you know, if you remember that, that's probably, probably the case. I think it was when, yeah, I think it was quite some time ago, but I think I was here. So yeah. Yeah. last five years, maybe, I don't know. Um, and then another question from Silas. It looked like the design accelerator was adding threads to the hole in the bottom of the component. Is there a way to specify unthreaded hole? I think you yes. can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so tapped or untapped. Absolutely. So when you, when you actually, you know, uh, specify that bottom surface uh, as a termination point, it adds another hole as a feature. It is, you know, a content center feature. And you click on that and change that feature to a through or a clearance hole instead of a threaded hole. Absolutely. Cool. I think that's it. We, uh, we kind of blasted through those questions. Uh, glad we could get those answered for you. Anything to add, Hop, before we let everybody go? 
no, that is it. Just, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'll just, you know, maybe end with uh, just asking you guys to be safe and start, you know, uh, customizing your content center uh, to work for you. Cause that's, that's yep. really what it's there for. And it's, you know, out of the box, it's useful, not as useful as it potentially could be. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. Um, thanks again, everybody. And again, thanks, Hav. We'll see you, everybody, again at next week. Same time, same place. Um, Alex Alvarez is going to be going some inventor tolerance analysis with us. That was another really highly requested session. So I'm uh, glad we could put that on for you. But again, Hav, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. All right. Thanks, guys.